everyone, in the fifth Harry Potter movie we can see Luna Lovegood wearing a crochet cardigan and now I'm going to show you how to crochet your own cardigan, just like the one Luna has. For this I used 3.5 balls of cotton yarn which is 175 grams. If you need a bigger size you of course need more yarn. Then I used a 3.5 and a 4mm crochet hook. If you don't have a smaller hook, it's also fine if you do it with a 4mm crochet hook. We start with a slip knot, so put the strand on the other strand and then put your fingers through and grab the tail and pull it tight. You just made a slip knot and then insert your 3.5mm crochet hook. If you don't have one, it's also okay if you do it with your 4mm crochet hook. Then grab the yarn with your left hand. And we start by making chains. So you just grab the yarn and pull it through the loop that is on your hook. So this is my fourth chain and then the fifth one. We need 84 chains plus an extra chain, so this will make 85 chains. After you have made 85 chains, you insert your hook into the second stitch away from the hook, so you skip the last stitch and then insert it right there. Grab the yarn, pull it through. You have two loops on your hook, yarn over, pull through two. So we just made a single crochet, again insert it into the next stitch, grab the yarn and pull it through and yarn over pull through two loops on your hook. This is the third single crochet, so now you just go all the way down to the end and make single crochets. In the end you should have 84 single crochets and now you can see I placed four stitch markers and for the first one you go to the end where you just made your last single crochet and then you count 14 stitches from there. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. And into the 14th stitch you place a stitch marker. Continue with counting, so 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, until you reach 28 and place your second stitch marker into the 28th stitch. From the next stitch on you continue counting all the way to the 56th stitch and then you place your third stitch marker there. And again from the next stitch on you count to 70 and insert your fourth stitch marker into the 70th stitch. And for the last part you should have 14 single crochets left because we made 84 in total. You can see that with the four stitch markers we divided our project into five parts and the middle part is a bit longer because it's for the back. And now let's continue crocheting. For the third row I'm going to switch to my 4mm crochet hook and with that I'm going to make two chains, turn my project around and start making double crochets. For this I yarn over and insert my hook into the first stitch, grab the yarn and pull it through. Now I have three loops on my hook, yarn over pull through two, yarn over again and pull through the last two loops on your hook. And for the second stitch, again yarn over, insert it into the stitch. Always make sure that you have both loops of the stitch on your hook. And then you grab the yarn and pull it through. Three loops on your hook, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. Now you just continue making double crochets until you reach your first stitch marker. So again yarn over, insert it, grab the yarn, pull it through, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. So this is the first stitch marker in our row 3 and now we are going to make an increase. So you make a double crochet into the stitch, chain 1 and then make another double crochet into the exact same stitch. And then you can remove the stitch marker and I placed it into the chain 1 space that we just made. So into the small hole I'm going to place my stitch marker so I know where to make the increase in the next row. And now I just continue with double crochets so the next double crochet goes into the next stitch. So you make one double crochet into each stitch until you reach the next stitch marker and when we get to a stitch marker we are always going to make an increase. 
Here I am at my second stitch marker. So again, I make a double crochet into the stitch with the stitch marker. Then I make one chain and make another double crochet into the exact same stitch. Then I grab the stitch marker and put it into the space in between the stitches into the hole. And then I just continue crocheting as usual, one double crochet into every stitch. Here I'm crocheting my third increase, which is one double crochet, one chain, one double crochet, all into the exact same stitch. Then I just continue until I reach my fourth stitch marker and make my last increase there. So here I'm holding the fourth stitch marker, so there you make your last increase. In the end you should have four holes or four spaces there because we made the increases and then I just removed my stitch markers because it's always visible where to make the next increase you see there's a small hole. At the end of every row you make two chains and turn your project around and then continue with making double crochets until you reach your first increase point. Here you can see I have three stitches left until the first increase. You can see that there is a space where we made our chain and into the hole or into the one space we are going to make a double crochet, a chain and a double crochet. So basically we just make another increase into the space of the increase. Then you just continue normally crocheting into every stitch. And when you get to the next increase, you also make an increase into the space. So you see the increase is always a double crochet, a chain and a double crochet. And then you just continue crocheting. So in every row that you make, we are on row 4 right now. So in every row you have those 4 increase points you see when you get to the holes, to the space. You place an increase in there and then you just continue until you reach the next increase. This is how it looks after 14 rows and it's always important that when you lay down the cardigan it forms a rectangle in the middle so you know the cardigan is all in the correct shape. I'm on row 22 right now and the cardigan reaches to my armpits and I can also connect the pieces from the back to the front around my arm. And now we are going to connect the two parts so that we have a sleeve. You might have to do less or more rows but the cardigan has to reach until your armpits. And now I connected the parts for the armpits with uh, two stitch markers. So one on the left side, one on the other side. So you know where the sleeves are going to be. After making two chains I'm starting row 23 right now and I'm going to make double crochets into every stitch until I reach the first increase where I placed my stitch marker. Here I'm crocheting the last three stitches until I reach the first increase point. And here is the first increase, you see there is the hole and I just make one double crochet in there. I lay down my hook and my project and then I turn it around for 180 degrees. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, you turn it around until you see you have your project on the back. And then I just go to the other space, the other increase space. So we are going to skip the side and then I just make one double crochet into the space of the other increase. So you see the increase space and then just make your double crochet in there. And now we just connected the front and back so you continue crocheting all the way until you reach the next increase point on the other side so we make the other sleeve. This is where I am right now and then I just continue on the straight until I reach the next increase point and you see the project is still turned upside down. Again, I'm three double crochets away from the next increase point. So this is the second and the last double crochet. And then I just remove my stitch marker and place one double crochet into the increase space. 
Then I lay down my crochet hook again and I turn my project 180 degrees again. So now the project is not upside down anymore. Then I insert my hook into the other increase point. So now every increase point is connected and I just continue crocheting normally into every stitch. And you see we formed our second sleeve hole. I would say the most difficult part is done connecting the sleeves together and now I just continue crocheting until I reach the end of the row 23. Here you can see how it should look like so you have those holes for the sleeves and then we just left out the sides there. At the end of row 23 I made two chains, turned my project around and then I just start row 24 and now we just crochet along the double crochets that we have. So right now we are making the lower part of the cardigan and later we are going to make the sleeves. Here I'm almost at the first sleeve hole and you can see I just continue crocheting normally into every stitch and when you get to the one stitch where we connected the two parts you just insert your hook, make a double crochet as usual and then continue normally and you can see we're just skipping the sleeve hole. So as I said the most complicated part is done so now you just continue making double crochets into every stitch and you don't need to make any increases anymore so the increases are history now it's just double crochets for every row. We are still in row 24 so when you get to the other sleeve where we connected the parts you just crochet into every stitch also into the middle stitch and then you just continue as usual. Here I'm crocheting the last bit of row 24 and now I'm starting row 25 and you can see I just continue all the way down. I added 12 more rows so now I have 37 rows in total. You can do less or more if you want to. And now it's time to do the sleeves. For this I divided the sleeve into two halves and placed a stitch marker into the middle. Since my last row was a front row, I am now going to start with a back row, so you see the back of the rows on the top of the cardigan. Go to the point on the armpit where we crocheted the two increased parts together, so you can see there is like a one outstanding crochet loop there. You insert your hook, grab the yarn and connect it with a chain and then you make another chain and make a double crochet into the exact same stitch. After the next stitch, which goes into the side of the one double crochet there, you just continue making double crochets into every stitch and you can see there are the loops for the double crochet. When you have one stitch left on top of the stitch marker, you are going to switch your hook, go to the 3.5mm crochet hook, insert it and then you're going to make three chains. Now switch to the 4mm crochet hook again and skip the next three stitches and then make a double crochet into the fourth stitch. So you skip three stitches, continue crocheting until you reach the beginning where we started, then insert your hook into the first double crochet and make a slip stitch. Then make two chains, turn your project around and start the new row. Continue crocheting until you reach the last double crochet, then switch to your 3.5mm crochet hook, make three chains and then insert your hook into the middle chain of the three chains that we just made before. Make a single crochet into the middle chain. After that you make three chains again and switch to your 4mm crochet hook and then place a double crochet on top of the other double crochet that we just made last round. Continue as usual and finish off the row and then I see you again for the next row, row number 3. Again this is a special part so I just switch my crochet hook, make three chains and then make a single crochet into the middle of the three chains of the row before. 
Then I make three chains again and place a single crochet into the middle of the other three chains. And then I make three chains again and switch to my 4mm crochet hook and place a double crochet on top of the other double crochet. And then you continue until the end of the row. So this is the pattern for now. I'm on row 3. I'm going to add two more rows. So it's always the same. Three chains and a single crochet. So you can see now I have five gaps or five holes because I added two more rows. And now for the last row I grab my 3.5mm crochet hook and start by making single crochets all around for the last row. When you reach the part with the special pattern, you just make three single crochets into the space there. So you make them over the three chains. The next single crochet goes into the single crochet that we just made in the row before. And then again make three single crochets into the one space there. So it's like when we did the increases, you just make them over the row of chains. And then again place a single crochet into the next stitch and three single crochets into the following space. Then make another single crochet and this is how you crochet over the special pattern. So here you can see how it looks when we are crocheting the single crochets over the spaces. And then you just continue making single crochets until the end of the row where you connect your stitches and cut the yarn. And then you do the exact same thing for the other sleeve. This is the finished result and then you can see I got a big button which I'm going to place at my neckline. And you can choose any button that you want, I just wanted to use a fancier one. Before I'm going to sew on my button, I'm going to make the opening of my cardigan a little bit more even. So you can see I already did it on the right side where I started on the top. And now I'm going to crochet from the bottom to the top on the left side so we can have an even seam. For this I'm going to insert my hook into the very last stitch right there and connect the yarn with a chain. And then you start making single crochets all the way up to the top. And because we are crocheting into the sides of the double crochets, there are no real crochet holes. So now I just crochet into the sides somewhere there. It doesn't really matter. You just place a single crochet almost into every row there. I'm almost at the neckline and now I have two stitches left until the end. And what I'm going to do now, I make three chains. I accidentally did four there, but I changed it afterwards. I make three chains because they are for the buttonhole. Then I skip the next stitch and place my final single crochet into the last stitch up there. Make one chain and then you can cut the yarn and pull the yarn through the loop on your hook. Then check if the button fits through the buttonhole and now you can do the other side, the right seam. You don't need to make a buttonhole there, so it's just going down from top to bottom. The final step will be sewing on the button. I actually don't really know how to do that, but I just managed it and did some ties there and then we are done with the cardigan. This is the end of the tutorial. Thank you so much for watching this video and if you enjoyed it, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe so you don't miss out any new videos. And here you can watch some of my previous videos and stay tuned for new content.